scriptures here in just a few moments, but uh, I'm going to sing a song before I get started. It's one of the only songs I ever sing in church, so I like this song. I've told the story many times that I've seen God move during this song. When I was real young, I was going to this little church down in uh, Ironville and uh, down there close to where I live and, and this quartet sung and the pastor was part of that quartet and man, they got beside themselves. And back then, I loved the Lord, but I, I'd never really got a hold of the Spirit of God. But it, it started opening up my eyes. Was, uh, there's something different in this song today. And then they sung it the next week and it, no one shouted and no one cried. But the week before, everybody was shouting and crying. And I said, well, what's the difference? But then God lets you know that the Spirit's what makes the difference. Sometimes you'll sing a song and the Spirit's in it. And sometimes you'll sing a song and, and God might be sitting by listening, but there's no movement of the Spirit. But in that this song affected me that way, I try to sing it. It's got a catchy, easy tune. There is a story of long ago. Men roamed in darkness, nowhere to go. One day the scene changed, and they ceased to cry. There is a reason Jesus passed by. Glory and honor be to the King. Shout hallelujah, let praises ring. Look to the future, home in the sky. There is a reason Jesus passed by. Men found compassion, <coughs> hungry were fed. Some saw their loved ones brought from the dead. They found great comfort that come from on high. There was a reason that Jesus passed by. Glory and honor be to the King. Shout hallelujah, let praises ring. Look to the future, home in the sky. There is a reason Jesus passed by. Third verse. One day a sinner, I found relief. Gone was my burden, gone was my grief. The angels were singing, and so was I. There is a reason Jesus passed by. Glory and honor be to the King. Shout hallelujah, let praises ring. Look to the future, home in the sky. There is a reason Jesus passed by. Amen. Lovely song. Amen. So this week, what I want to preach about And I found that different times in my life that this is true. But I'm going to call this today as far as just a key word or a key thought. Encourage yourself. Encourage yourself. And so I want you to turn, if you will, uh, uh, 1 Samuel chapter 30. I'm going to read verse 1 through 8. And I want to talk about David. This is just prior to David becoming king in his life and uh, some, some big battles are going on and some things are happening to David. And we get the, the famous test, text that I've heard different ones quote and the Lord brings it to my attention sometimes. We've got to encourage ourselves sometimes. We've got to remember the landmark, remember where we've been, in order to understand where we're headed, we've got to know where we have been. 
So in, in, in Samuel chapter 30 in verses 1 through 8, it said, And it came to pass when David and his men were come to Ziklag, Ziklag on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziklag and smitten Ziklag and burned it with fire. And they had taken the women captive that were therein. And they slew not any of them, either great or small, but carried them away and went on their way. So David and his men <coughs> came to the city, and behold, it was burned with fire. And their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captive. Then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. And David's two wives were taken captive. Ahinoam, the Jezreelitess, and Abigail, the wife of Nabal, the Carmelite. And David was greatly distressed, for the people spake of stoning him, because the soul of all the people was grieved every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. And David said to Abathar the priest, as Amalek's son, I pray thee, bring me hither the ephod. And the Abathar brought him the ephod to David. And David inquired the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this truth? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake them, and without fail you will recover all. So going back to the verse 6, and I'll reread it just real quickly. It said, David was greatly distressed. The people spake of stoning him because the soul of the people was very grieved. It just told us that they wept until they couldn't weep. No more. And uh, every man was weeping for their sons and their daughters. And, but David encouraged himself in the Lord, his God. He went to the only source of strength that he knew he could go to. He, he went to the rock where he knew he had found water before. He, knew, he went to the, to the same God that helped him uh, stone Goliath and helped him overcome Goliath in the, the great battle with the stone to the forehead. And uh, no doubt, maybe when he encouraged himself, he remembered setting off Goliath's head and holding it up and, and showing the trophy of God that the Philistines, the, the uh, uncircumcised, the unlearned, the unlawful, were not going to trample the people of Jesus Christ, the people of God in this story. But David encouraged himself in the Lord. Bear with me and I'll go over here to another scripture that, that plays right in here. I want to show you that in, in chapter 18, chapter 18 and verse 6 of, of First Samuel, it said, And it came to pass, as they came, when David was returned from the slaughter of the Philistine, that the women came out of all the cities of Israel singing and dancing, to meet King Saul with tabrets and joy and with instruments of music. And the women answered one another as they played and said, Saul has slain his thousands, and David his ten thousands. And Saul was very wroth, and the same displeased him. And he said, They have ascribed unto David ten thousands, and to me they have ascribed a thousands. And what can I... Can he have more than but the kingdom? And so I, David, from that day forward. And it came to pass on the morrow that an evil spirit from God came upon Saul. And he prophesied, and he prophesied in the midst of the house. And David played with his hand as at other times. And there was a javelin in Saul's hand. And Saul cast the javelin, for he said, I will smite David even to the wall with it. But David avoided out of his presence twice. And 
Saul was afraid of David because the Lord was with him and was departed from Saul. But in these few scriptures, we see that uh, the up and down, the, the going back and forth, the victories, and, and, and how we'll come off of victory, and it seems like that we no more than get off of victory that the devil's coming up against us again. And they come out, they were dancing in the singing because David had returned from the slaughter of the Philistine. He, he had slew Goliath with, with, the, with the rock to the forehead, and they were celebrating because this was a great celebration. It said they, they were dancing and, and singing, and that they, to, to me, with the tabrets and the joy and the instruments of the music. And they began to brag on David, and, and they began to also brag on Saul, which was king, but they bragged a little bit deeper and heavier on David. And King Saul, which was, was the king of the land in that day, became jealous of David, even to the point that he threw a javelin at him. It says twice he done this, and it said twice the Lord delivered David out of the hand. And, and then uh, just 12 short chapters later, you have this where David's out in, in the war fields and, and still fighting against the, the, the different battling elements, and he goes to this city called Ziklag only to find that, that his wife and, and all the people of of the people that he represented here, the, the Israel people had been taken hostage and, and taken out, and it said he encouraged himself in the Lord. He remembered who his God was. He went to his God. Amen. So if you remember over in the... I'll try to slow down just a little bit here. I'm going, to, I'm going to end up over in the New Testament in just a little while, but the thought going to be encourage yourself, which leads to a lot of different questions. How do we encourage ourselves? But 1 Samuel and chapter 30 and about verse 8, it's talking about after David inquired of the Lord, he said, shall I go after this troop of men that's stolen my wives and stolen these people's sons and and all of our goods, and, and this is what we've been weeping over. Shall I go after the Lord? See, he didn't get all haughty and, and high-minded, but he went to the Lord to find out if it was okay to go to war with this people because you will not win any battle truly if the Lord's not with you. If you win a battle and the Lord's not in it, the Lord's still not in it. And the day, David knew this, and so he said, Shall I over... Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake them, and without fail, recover all. And just a reminder in verse 7, this is Abathar the priest that David is inquiring of of the mouth of the Lord to see what the Lord wanted to do. And so, we get over in the Verse 16, he's, he's been on this pursuit and they, they, they find somebody that can lead them to where these uh, this band of men are, this uh, Amalekites that had uh, invaded the south and had invaded Ziklag. But in verse 16, and I thought this was a very curious thing to bring out. It says, And when he had brought him down, behold, there was spread abroad they were spread abroad upon all the earth, eating and drinking and dancing because of all the great spoil that they had taken out of the land of the Philistines and out of the land of Judah. And verse 17, it says, David smote them from the twilight even until the evening of the next day, and there escaped not a man of them say 400 that rode upon camels and had fled. So David had a victory here. And he recovered all that the Amalekites had carried away and David rescued his two wives.
we need to make sure what God is in and not in because here we have people that are doing the same shouting and dancing and singing and it, it, it made me feel like when I, when I began to read this, the state of this world, that, that the world right now is dancing and singing and, and shouting and thinking that they're having their victories against the church of God when indeed they are not having a true victory against the church of God. True victory is mine, saith the Lord. The Lord is the one that gives victory. The Lord is the one that gives hope. The Lord is the one that gives healing. The Lord is the one that saves the soul from uttermost destruction, that saves us from the pits of hell. And I'm going to tell you right now that the Lord is going to come back one of these days soon. And he's going to, it says, it says taking wrath upon all those and vengeance upon all those that do not obey the gospel of God, the gospel of Jesus Christ. There's going to come a time when the Lord's going to come back and He's going to see the different ones that are, are playing church and the ones that are playing world and the ones that are, are playing for money and the ones that are playing for gain and greed and, and the lust of the flesh and, and all the different things, all the different evil imaginations that they're patting themselves on the back for. But the patent's going to come to an end because God's great army is going to come from heaven. He's going to smoke from heaven even while they're dancing and singing and celebrating their so-called great victory. Now we know there is a dance and there is a victory of God. And I know right now that it seems like the church world is not in a victory and a dance of God. It seems like that we're barely holding on. And, and thus that leads me into the, the title of my message today that I said we need to encourage one another. We need to encourage ourselves. Just like David <coughs> said, he encouraged himself. He remembered the victory. No doubt he might have even remembered the singing and the dancing the day that he defeated Goliath as he come back into town that day. And he might have remembered how happy and how much joy. And he might have remembered victory is the Lord, not by my, not by my spirit, but by the Spirit of the Lord. Amen. And so, having said all that, I'm going to go ahead and, and go over to Matthew chapter 28. Talking about encouraging ourselves today in the Lord. Matthew 28, I'm going to start reading about verse 7. And go quickly. I'm going to back up to verse 6. Said, he is not here, for he is risen. And he said, Come see the place where the Lord lay. This is the angel talking that they had found at the tomb of Jesus. He said, Go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall you see him, lo, I have told you. And they departed quickly from the sepulcher with fear and great joy and did run to bring his disciples word. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, All hell. And they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. Then said Jesus unto them, Be not afraid. Go tell my brethren and they that they go into Galilee, and there shall they see me. Now when they were going, behold, some of the watch came into the city and showed unto the priest, chief priest all the things that were done. And when they were assembled with the elders and had taken counsel, they gave large money unto the soldiers, saying, Say ye, his disciples came by night and stole him away while he slept. And if this come to the governor's ears, we will persuade him and secure you. So they took the money and did as they were taught. And this saying is commonly reported among the Jews until this day. Then, get to a focal point here of 
encouraging ourselves. It says, Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee into the mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Finishing up the chapter, said Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. So just elaborating here for just a few moments, that, that verse 17, it says, and they worshipped him. And, and, and that word encouragement was just so strong in my mind, that word that we need to encourage ourselves. And, and what better encouragement than to fall at the feet of Jesus than to fall at Jesus and worship Jesus. So, so what the word is saying is that when we when we worship Jesus is when we find our joy, when we find our strength, when we find our baptism in the Holy Ghost, when we, we find our answer to financial needs and, and financial queries and things like that, it's all at the feet and the need of Jesus. That's the place where we encourage ourselves is at Jesus. And that's the reason that uh, example that the Lord put in my heart that, that even in the Old Testament, in order to encourage yourself, how do you encourage yourself? You fall at the feet of Jesus. You worship Jesus. And then Jesus is going to give you instruction and peace of what to do and what to obey and, and what to hear and what to say. But we've got to find Jesus and we've got to encourage ourselves. Luke chapter 17. chapter 17 and about verse 12. Talking about encouraging ourselves, strengthening ourselves, getting more boldness from Jesus Christ, getting more boldness from the Lord. And so, it says, And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go, show yourselves unto the priest. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he had saw that he was healed, turned back. And with a loud voice glorified God and fell down at, on his face at his feet, giving thanks. And he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answered and said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? There are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. And he said unto the, and the, he said unto him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith has made thee whole. And so we have the one leper coming back to Jesus and, and falling at his feet and worshiping him. And so we're, we're still on the, the, the simple thought of this message today is encourage yourself. Encourage yourself. You know, it, it just made me think that, that a lot of people today have been healed by the Lord Jesus Christ, and a lot of people have been touched, and, and uh, different uh, prayers have been answered, but they never actually go to Jesus to get the further instructions of what they need to do. They don't encourage themselves. This, this, is, uh, this is such a walk that it's designed, and it's going to tear us down, it's going to weary us. 
And if we don't learn, just like it says here on the wall, that they that wait upon the Lord are going to renew their strength, we need to wait on the Lord. We need to be at the Lord's feet. That is what it means by encourage yourself. You have no way of truly encouraging yourself within yourself unless the God of all glory be in yourself. And if the God of all glory not be in yourself, you need to go to the to God of all glory and get Him in yourself that you can have further instructions. I know that the, just like the leper here, it said only one out of ten went back to Jesus. And truly we have a lot of people that are coming in the doors of Jesus Christ today, but they're not actually going to the feet of Jesus to be encouraged. Uh, I, I remind them of Acts chapter 8, it, it says, and with, when the Holy Ghost is coming, it says you will receive power from on high when you receive the Holy Ghost, when you receive the power of Jesus Christ. We need to encourage ourselves, just like David did. We need to remember who we are and what we are and why we are. We need to remember that it's Jesus Christ, it's God made flesh, it's Emmanuel, God with us, that died on the cross. And, and like I say, as I started preaching today, when, when God first put the, the Spirit on me on this particular Scripture, I was thinking, well, maybe the Lord wants me to preach a, a one God message. And, and truly, that's a good message, that there's only one Lord and one faith. There's only one God who became flesh and dwelt amongst us, and we beheld His glory as the only begotten of the Father. But then as I began to look at it, uh, no doubt the disciples were distraught that They'd seen their King of Kings and their Lord of Lords put on the holy, the, the ugly cross for, for, the, for the remission of sins and all that blood was drained out of Him for our sins and, and for our cause and for our justification. But they didn't know that just yet. They hadn't connected with the fact of the things that He had said. He said, I must go away that I can send a comforter into your heart and you shall know Him for He is with you right now. No doubt they were so down and out and, and they'd had their I, I quit signs and maybe they'd laid their instruments up in the willow tree or, or maybe they'd said I'm of no more use. What, what use is there or one chance to ever be free in God and to have what we had in the old times. But they didn't realize that that which the, the prophets that diligently would have wanted to have inquired and looked into was even at the doorstep. Because after Jesus departs from them, it's only about 120 days later that they're in the upper room and they're in one mind and one accord. And, and, and you're talking about encouraging yourself. Where did they go when they needed that encouragement? They didn't go back to the old traditions of the law that, that, that couldn't save, but they went to the, to the new substitute, the new offering, the new blood offering that they gave on the cross. They went to Jesus Christ looking for something. They didn't give up hope. What does it mean to encourage yourself? It means to not give up hope. If you pray two times for the Holy Ghost, pray a third time. If you prayed a hundred times for the Holy Ghost, pray that hundred and first time. Because you're not going to find peace. You're not going to find hope in anything else but Jesus Christ and in the baptism of the Holy Ghost and in the baptism in Jesus Christ's name for the remission of sins. So today I'm preaching encourage ourselves. We need to encourage ourselves. And, and uh, I, I think I started out by saying sometimes we end up preaching things that's what we're going through. And I know that even the little things make a difference. I, I know that sometimes I, I'm preaching on, on the Facebook world and, and sometimes even a stranger will say, will say thank you, I needed that. And sometimes it means the world to me to have some encouragement, to have someone believing in your cause of what you're doing to respond to what you are and who you are in Christ. And so today I reach out, and by way of the anointing, and by way of preaching, I reach out to pat the church on the back and say, be encouraged. Encourage yourself, church. We've come too far. We've turned up nations. We've turned up governments. We've turned the world upside down with this gospel of Jesus Christ. Now is not a time to quit. This is a time to grab hold of the plow and not be looking back because it's time, it's time to march forward. Never in a time have we seen more people split hell wide open than what we're seeing right now. And we're in a time that we're wanting to quit. At a time when we're supposed to be getting in gear and going full speed ahead is a time that the devil says, I got them not where I want them. But we have a little secret. We can go to the feet of Jesus at an appointed place, at an appointed time, and we can find the Spirit of God giving us instruction. I 
know that uh, I know that while I go and it said a certain place has been appointed to them in the mountain. God has a certain place for everybody under my voice today where it's a place for you to meet God. Some of you, it may be at an altar of prayer and God will want you to be at an altar of prayer today. And some of you, it may be in your prayer closet at the house. Some of you, it may be listening to a certain set of gospel music while you're praising and shaking all over under the anointing of God. Or you may be praying in another tongue and God's interpreting through His own Spirit to yourself and encouraging you. I'm talking about a church that needs encouragement. I'm talking about a church that is not encouraged, that needs encouragement, that needs hope, that needs some sap, that needs some zeal, that needs some wild put into their step. We've lost sight. We've lost sight of the Savior. We've, we've seen that He can heal. We've seen that He can deal with people and He can change people's lives. But we've lost sight of that. He is God made flesh. He is the, the holy mountain that we've come to that cannot be moved, that has come to us that we can receive of His Holy Spirit to talk in our heart. No longer from the voice of the mountain like in the days of Moses, but God can come in our heart and He can speak and He can encourage and He can fill with this happiness and with this zeal. And, and, and I feel glad to, to say today, I feel driven by the Lord to say, Church, it's time also while we encourage ourselves that while that we learn to be happy, that we quit going around like we're drinking sour lemon juice all the time, that we learn to embrace this life that we're in and live it to the fullest and live it to the happiest and live it according to wisdom and knowledge and embrace the Word of God, how it gives us instruction of such things. We are not an unhappy people. Over in Romans it said that peace and joy and righteousness in the Holy Ghost, that's what the Holy Ghost is. It's not meat and drink, but it's joy and happiness. And I think that a lot of times that we have forgot because we forgot how to encourage ourselves in the joy and the beauty of God Almighty, that we go around and we act depressed and we act sad and we act like we're downtrodden when the truth is that we're only just a few steps away from seeing Jesus in that mountain. We're only a few steps away from reaching out and touching the hem of His garment if we don't give up. What if David wouldn't have encouraged himself? What if David would have said, I give up. I can't win the battle. But instead he went back to Jesus. He went back to the Lord. He said, what shall I do? My people have been abducted. My goods have been abducted. Jesus, what shall I do? And the Lord said, pursue. Go get what is yours. I'm going to show you who the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings is. And then he caught him asleep. He caught him playing. Well, the church isn't asleep and the church isn't playing. The church is encouraging ourselves today. We're getting a hold of God. We're in the last days, church, and we need to get a hold of God for real and for good. And we need to be bold in what we believe and happy in what we believe. <coughs> We need not to be condemned in the thing that we allow. We need to learn to be happy, church. We need to be happy in Jesus Christ. And there is such happiness that we can't even contain it. Bless your name, Jesus. Bless your name, Jesus. Praying in the most precious power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost. We're living in a day in a society where people have not went back to the feet of Jesus and got all the goods, got all the instruction. Got, uh, just like the woman that said they brought her in, in, in adultery and she'd been caught by the Lord and there was no condemners. And he said, go and sin no more. There's further instruction when we encourage ourselves. God will not leave us not encouraged. He will leave us exact, explicit plans of what we need to do to accomplish that thing which is His good and perfect and wonderful will. That all would obtain Jesus Christ and come to the perfect knowledge of His salvation. Bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. And, and I'll wrap it up just uh, just in a few moments, but that's the way I would say it and that's the way I feel it today is be encouraged, church. Be encouraged. There's too many witnesses in the Bible of people that's, that's uh, even uh, went up until the shedding of blood and, that they've been martyred, they've been 
They've been squished. They've been beat. They've been stoned. They've been sawn asunder like, like we preached last week. And we, we're complaining simply because we feel a little bit down and out. Well, uh, we have the goods and we have the means and, and we have the uh, ability to reach the whole world if we would just learn to be enthused. And you won't find that enthusiasm unless you go back to the feet of Jesus and cast in your net one more time. No doubt maybe someone's listening and saying, well, I've tried this and I've tried that. Uh, I've fished all night. Just like the Lord said, He said, cast your net in again. And it says that they couldn't even bring the fish in because it breaks the net. And I feel like at this end time, and I'm not preaching that there's going to be some great, great revival that's going to break out, but I'm going to preach this. There's going to be some people saved in these end times where it says where sin abounds. Grace does much more abound. I'm telling you right now, God's going to let this grace abound. The more simple and ugly and ugly hearted and downhearted and the more that they call evil good, the more that God's going to say, but grace is better. Grace is better. Mercy is better. Shed blood for your sins is better. I can accept you. I can embrace you. I can make you a son of God. Cry and have a father from your heart. If you'll just come unto me, all you that are weary and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I will give you rest, says the Lord. I will give you rest. Not some man, not some program, not some set, set of songs, but the anointing, but Jesus Christ will set us free. Amen. I appreciate the church tonight. I appreciate y'all tonight. That's the way I feel tonight is that Jesus Christ is telling us to encourage ourselves, to be encouraged in Him, through Him, and with Him, because there is no one else but Him. Amen. 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 We set a time of peace, Just trying to follow the Lord best I can. For anyone that would want to pray tonight for encouragement, Amen. If anybody hear my voice, you need encouragement. Just get down on your knees and raise your hands. Go to your prayer closet. Go to the one that created the whole world for his good pleasure. Go to Jesus Christ and encourage yourself. It's all in the name of Jesus. Amen.